There's wasps and I think there was a rat up there the other day as well. Nice one, nice one, nice one. I'll talk you through wiring up this switch because I'm feeling generous. Looks more complicated, but it's not. Ruben, we actually got you a present. Nah, that's great, surely. No. This is the evil if you are joking. <laughs> Let me tell you why it's a good day. Listen to this. Can we have five minutes of ASMR? I feel like you're not into this. <laughs> this is magical. Right, so have you seen these switches before? You probably have if you've been watching our videos. Annoying, yes, the one that it was replaced for was slightly smaller. These are Lutron switches. It's basically a smart switch and it's a smart lighting system. And it's, it is the smart lighting system the most respected one, I think, Lutron and Crestron. Kind of the old school champion OGs of the game. And that's not just for lighting control, that's for blind control and various bits and pieces. If you want home automation, then you start going down the control for CDR, yada, yada, yada route. But just for smart lighting for homes, if you want a bulletproof system, generally it's Lutron in most places, if you can afford it. But these remotes here are the Pico remotes. So what I'm going to show you today is how to retrofit it into your home. So this house has already been wired and it already has some smart features, but they want Lutron everywhere. So we've been back and forth, back and forth through various videos, doing the outside lighting, doing the downstairs, changing the whole property over to Lutron. Um, and we're using the RA2 system. What I'll do is I'll show you how you can retrofit it. So we've got these lights already in there. They want these replaced with the JCT V50 tilter lights. And they're just on a switch currently. So this switch here at the minute do you remember my switching made simple video? Super easy. You've got your common feed coming in. So that's feed in, feed out, and then your switch across to the light. So when you switch the switch, it gives power. It goes off to the light, back down the neutral, back to the consumer unit. So we, we don't want it on a switch. What we want is this cable here to now be permanently live. Because once that cable is permanently live, we can then switch it somewhere else using a smart switch, which is what I'll show you now. So this here is the dimmer. So it's an RA2 dimmer. So we want this to talk to the hub downstairs, the Lutron hub, and we want this to decide whether or not these lights come on. And this will be controlled by whatever we want. We control this from an app, we can control this from wireless switches, wired switches, we can control this from anything basically. But in order to make this work, it just needs a permanent feed and then it has a switch out. So that means I'm gonna link this out with Wagos so that you've got a permanent feed and a permanent neutral. Obviously, you never switch the neutral unless you're switching both together up to the first point of the circuit. And then at, at the first point, we'll loop out to the first light and then that will just kind of daisy chain off of that. And we'll do the same in here. So each zone that you want switched needs one of these controllers. So there'll be one up there. We'll have another one in here so that this bathroom is on its own separate switch. So again, I'll open this up and this will be the same. It might be a tiny bit more complicated because we have the fan. I'll explain that as well. It's still super simple, like me. Looks more complicated, but it's not. So you've got all your permanents and all your switches. So all your permanents together, and then when you switch, you switch in between, like that. Why you've got more in here is you've probably got the permanent life for the fan. You've got feed in, feed out, permanent life to fan. And there's also a PIR sensor in there as well. So you've probably just got a permanent feed up to the PIR sensor. So that's why you've got four cables in there, but don't be thrown off by that. We're gonna be making that simple shortly. First of all, I'm gonna go find the circuit. Just give us a shout when this goes off. Yeah. Yeah. Ruben, we actually got you a present. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well, actually? Yeah. For real. What, for real? For real. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's yours. You might need to adjust it slightly because my wrists are a tiny bit fatter than yours. But nah, that's a joke, surely. No, for real. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's very, very nice of you. There's more happiness in giving than receiving. It's true. So well, right now I am very happy, but that's true. <laughs> no. Thank you, man. You're welcome. That's very kind of you. <laughs> not joking. Mm. This is the evil way if you are joking. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not joking. <gasps> no, I just realised. Was, <laughs> was this part of the wish? 
What? Thing. No, what? No. <laughs> no. Mate, that's from Switzerland. I should put it on. But thank you. That is very fresh much. from Geneva. What are you talking about? Huh? That's fresh from Geneva. Fresh from Geneva? <laughs> yeah. You know that place in Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> Not Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva, Beijing. <laughs> but it's from there. I just thought that counts. And you can get it adjusted and that'll be a sick watch. Yeah. That actually looks sick. It is pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to make it smaller or are you going to go for the two-pack look? Uh, you know what? Why don't you wear it as a necklace? A necklace? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might be from Wish, but I still think it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. And it was, you know, still cost money. I like the colour as well. Yeah, I like the colour. I've been looking it's... at watches for that colour. So. Yeah, I like it. It suits my eyes. Did you really think you had a genuine Rolex for a minute? No. You did? No. No? No. I know, I just thought it was a nice watch. Yeah, it is a nice watch. But then I realised that <laughs> you were doing like some wish thing. I was hoping to be put through to the lady that handles your account or your account department. The lady that handles my accounts? Or your account department, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think they have an assigned gender, my accountant, but... Okay. Uh, who is well, this? Is, is your account... Is, um, a and I'm calling from a group called Thank you. Am I, speaking to I just think now Am you've now you've confused Callum? to Callum, yeah, it is Callum, but yeah. I'm just so hurt that you assumed the gender of my accountant that I'm probably gonna have to go. But thank you and have a nice day. Thank you for your time. <laughs> People just too much nowadays, don't think. aren't they? They've got no respect. respect. Sick, you know. I mean, it's clearly well crafted to the perfect standard of Rolex, and it looks pretty sick. I, I was actually looking at watches with that colour, so you know, result. I'm just gonna put it to normal time because it is not. I think that's set to Singaporean standard time. It's only an hour ahead. This right here is a power stance in the morning. You get out of the shower, you come over to your Juliet balcony. They call it a Juliet balcony and not a Julio balcony for a reason. Because otherwise, if men had it, they'd just be like this. Ah. Morning, Barbara. Nice avocados. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you too. Keep trimming. Oh, I'll get your head torch as well, out of my bag. This is not sponsored, although they did send it to me free so I don't know if that's technically sponsored but I get sent a lot of stuff as a company doesn't mean we talk about it doesn't mean we like it that is a bad boy head torch also it's got a little pen holder sharpie holder on the side which is pretty handy but tool of the day link to it is in the description below oh dear. I'm just about to grab some rods just so you can see where and what See me? Yeah. Cool. Do you see this cable here? Yeah. Do you want to remove that? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, just pull it out. Yep. One less cable in the switch. So that was one of the permanents I was talking about. Right, so you've got that, yeah? Yep. Cool, you can drop it to me down this hole if it's easier. There's wasps and I think there was a rat up there the other day as well. <laughs> well, there's definitely one now. You're not a rat, you're more of a chihuahua. Well, that was for the PIR. We're gonna make these switches beautiful. Need to make switches great again. We interrupt this video for less than 30 seconds just to talk about our sponsor for today's video, Tradeify, who has fortunately made it possible for us to be able to make today's video. Um, if you'd like to try Tradeify, it's a fantastic workflow management software, helps tradesmen to get time back in their life to do things that they actually want to do. The link is below where you can get three months at 50% off. We just need a switch line run from here yep. over to here. Right, okay. So if you just want to grab that, if you want to feel bad for me, I was doing this on my own the other day, Ruben, up and down this loft ladder, I don't know how many times. 
<laughs> nice one, nice one, nice one. Let's see where this one goes. Does this just go to the next down light? Yeah, that just goes to the next down light. Right, because there's too many cables here. And my worry is that there used to be a pendant in here or something. And that they've, because um, it was similar in another room. So I want to trace them out and see where they go. Right, so one of these should go down to the switch and the other one will trace out. This one? Yeah. This one goes to Timbuktu. That one runs all the way round to the right. Well, to the right of me. And the other one goes off to the left. Wow. Trace them out. One should go to the switch, and I reckon one is going to a naughty little pendant that's been right, left I in this live above the ceiling. Yeah. This isn't good. I shouldn't give you this sort of information because now someone who's clever can use the, some quick maths to work out exactly how tall I am, and if, if and realistically when I'm on the run from the law, um, you have a reference for my height. So actually, I'm going to throw you off. Yep, you keep looking for the guy that's two rods tall. That's right. I'm two rods tall. Don't remove that. We need right. that. Right. Okay, so don't, that one then is the one going down to the switch. If you trace the other one, that one I reckon is going to the middle of the room. Right. So now we've got this cable here, which is coming from the switch, which is going to be made permanently live. So this will be permanently fed then, this driver here. Um, and then the cable that comes out of this will be switched by this driver. What we'll do, wire this into JCC. And just in case people say, oh, you can't strip like that. It will damage the inner cores. It really doesn't. The camera don't lie. What we have then is we've got this driver, which was set to cool white, because that's the color he wants it set to, and that just plugs into there. So it goes from the switch, permanently fed through, so basically straight from the board into this, and then this is switching this downlighter, then out of this downlighter, all the others are powered. So it makes sense, doesn't it? Super simple. Just put that at the start of the circuit, and then we'll program it. So I'll explain how to do that shortly. So we need to find out which one of these goes back to the switch. Um, I reckon it's probably one of those. And the switch is just on the other side of that right one. So it is. If it was a switch line rather than feed it the switch, yeah. you just put your testers across it, switch the switch on, switch it off right. until it beeps. Um, but unfortunately, it's not that way. Just take this off there that we're looking for that cable just there and if just double check yep there we go so it's that one there that's the one that's going into the Lutron so that one can just be a normal down light alrighty so we've got all of the lights done now we've just got this to wire up so he's swapped them all for JCC's we've got the old sensor out we've got this old P lamp out Probably not a very nice name for it really, pee lamp. Lamp that comes on when you go pee in the night or wash your hands or whatever you do in the bathroom at night. Um, but we just need to figure out these cables now and I want to properly remove them because what's happened next door is that all the lights that have come out when they put these down lights in, they've just taped them up and left them above the ceiling. So for the customer's point of view, fine, but you've got a live cable sitting there above your ceiling. So even if we're disconnecting it, I'd just rather completely get rid of it. So. He's gonna go give that a tug, pull the cables out of there so they're gone. I'll talk you through wiring up this switch because I'm feeling generous. And, all right, go have some fun, stay safe. See you on the other side. If you think I'm being mean, send them up in the loft. I'm sorry, but I was here the other day and I was up in the loft pretty much all day when I was an apprentice. I was up in the loft all the time. And Ruben sees me up in the loft an awful lot too. He's not wrong. <laughs> Yeah, nice. So this cable here. Okay, don't worry. I'll tell you what then. Cut off the ends. And yep. uh, oh no, don't cut off the ends yet. Right. One sec. Let me just get my touch tester. The live and earth. Live and earth. Oh, okay. Are they together? I'm just stripping it back. You strip it back. Yeah. Separate it. 
Make a little song. Bit of a crap song, mate. Cool. That's that. So if you want to just cut off the end of that yep. and coil it up, and we'll just label that spare, and then that can just stay there. Because in actual fact, if they ever want to change anything, it's probably better not to cut it out. It's useful um, if it's a difficult route. There, the other ones, I'm not too worried because we can just rod a new cable up the wall, whereas this is obviously a difficult route if it's not pulling through. So we'll leave that in as a spare. Okay, okay, next, this one here. Do you want to pull that one out? Cool, cheers, yeah, that could be chopped and coiled up. Come on down and give yourself a big pat on the back. What? How do I put so much on my credit card? How is that possible? Can I help you? Yeah, I have Corey here already. Why do I need you? But, but Corey's every inch the man I need. I don't need any more. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was too funny. <laughs> right, so this is the basis for the uh, Lutron stuff. So you can have different configurations, like you could have two of these switches side by side, but these are the switches, the Pico remotes, and they basically slide in or can stick to the wall, so you could stick them in little discrete places. You could even just stick it on there and forget having a switch all together, but that's got a, bet a battery. There's a battery in it, yeah. Um, but that three volt battery, I think lasts like 10 years or something silly. I've never had to replace one anyways. What you do is now with that all way goed out, permanently on, we fix this into place. So this comes separate. You choose whatever switch you want because you can have these any, in any configuration. And I'll show you some after I've done this with all the different mood lights on it because you can set moods. Whereas this is just a basic on and off function and dim. Um, because that's all they want here and then we can we can program that to do the, a relay for the fan so that when we push that it triggers a relay up there for the fan to come on and it will also trigger um, the relay for the lights the dimmer for the lights I should say so there's two things that these switches will be designed to control but it can do unlimited things it's not like a normal light switch where you've got a 10 amp limit um, where you then would have to switch to using contactors and things with this, because it, it's electronic and it's just talking to a computer, it can literally do as much as you'd like. If you wanted, you could have a master switch that would do all the lights in the whole house. It could be a kill switch. So if you're doing like a um, some sort of events hall or something like that, um, it might be useful. So, like so, and obviously you can get a variety of finishes and things as well. We'll do. I'll do that on all of them, and then I'll show you how to program. So now it's time to program the lights. So I've just got into the system. So the way I've done that is I've gone onto my Lutron app and then I've tapped access a local system, I've connected to their Wi-Fi and then you find the hub and you just tap the little button on the back of the, uh, this is the Lutron hub here, so I've just tapped the little button on the back of that. Right, so now I'm inside the app, so I'm going to go to settings, add device and then it will let me select the type of device which I want to add, so I want to add a 240 volt inline dimmer and then it should find them slowly. It might take a little bit longer because we're quite away from the hub here. So it's found all three, which is great. So we'll flash them. Great, so that's this one. So we'll add that. And we'll call that bedroom upstairs. Ceiling lights, main, and that's that added. Yep, so these are flashing, so I'll just add these. Master bedroom toilet, ceiling lights, main, add another device. We'll add another 240 volt dimmer. Yep, so they're flashing now, so I'll add that. And we'll call that upstairs, bedroom, bathroom. And that's those added. So now I'm going to add these Pico remotes and I'll program them for 10 seconds until the LED blinks quickly. There we go. So now we'll assign that to upstairs, bedroom, bathroom. And once that's added, we'll assign it to do the lights. Another Pico remote, let's add this one. So again, we'll just hold this down for 10 seconds. And we'll assign that to bedroom, Upstairs bedroom, and we'll add another device. I'm going to assign that to bathroom, master bedroom, toilet, and then now that should just uh, 
control it once it's finished its setup. There we go, so this now is being controlled by this switch. So, brightens up, brightens down, dims up, dims down. And for the fans, annoyingly, we didn't have the fan controllers. So, I'll have to pop back some of the fans at the minute we've just had to put on with the lighting which isn't a problem for now but long term it's not a good solution you want to have its own separate control it can still come on with the lights but then it can overrun it can do all the different things it's better that you just give it a permanent supply and tell it what to do so that is something that i will sort so i am now just doing a little bit of testing in the garage however I feel like we've covered enough in this video. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.